Hey guys, what's up? I'm Captain Mike and welcome back to Florida Sport Fishing TV Plus and welcome to all our new members as well. A uh, couple things I want to mention real quick and then we're going to get right into a really cool topic. It's Tuesday, August 30th. Beautiful day down here in Marathon in the Florida Keys. Um, wanted to just remind everybody, Florida Sport Fishing TV is airing on World Fishing Network this weekend. Really cool show titled Fantastic. Um, about dolphin fishing offshore. Really cool perspective from a local charter captain as well. So make sure that you catch that. Um, here recently on Florida Sport Fishing TV Plus, we've posted a couple of really great videos, seminar on how we use marine electronics. You can check that out. And most recently, a full-blown seminar on Queen Snapper and Snowy Grouper titled Deep Drop Duo. Uh, so, of course, you can check that out. We just filmed that over at Chaos. Uh, nevertheless, look, I want to talk to you about really cool topic here. You guys know I'm totally into wahoo fishing, right? Absolutely love wahoo fishing. I always have. I'm just intrigued by these fish and like to spend a lot of time just trying to get them dialed in here. Most of the fishing that I'm doing for the wahoo, I would say almost all of it down here in the Keys, is trolling the Nomad deep diving plugs. Um, if you have been following me on Instagram or even, of course, here or anywhere at the seminars, you know I'm a huge fan of those DTX minnows and I've had some in just incredible success. Uh, but I found, you know, the more that I fish down here, especially when it's off season, not during that peak winter season from fall into winter, um, but spring and summer, there's wahoos around. There's local fish around. Um, even now heading, you know, of course, into September, there's fish around, but a lot of times there's grass. We're dealing with a lot of sargasm weed, okay? A lot of sargasm weed, and that becomes a huge problem because you just can't troll. You can't troll effectively for, you know, gosh, five minutes without getting covered up in grass, and these fish just won't touch the lure if it's got grass on it. Um, but there's an alternative, you know, and that's live bait fishing. You know, if I'm out there trying to troll, and I just can't do it because there's just too much grass rather than having to throw in the towel and switching gears. And understand when I say too much grass, look, there's days when, like I said, it's just covered up from 150 to 300 right in the zone. And if you run 10 miles, you know, in either direction, it's the same scenario. No matter how far you run east or west down here, it just happens this time of the year or in the spring, summer, etc. from wind patterns, current, tide, you know, all of those different factors. And there's just been an exceptional amount of grass this season everywhere. Um, so like I said, the other option is live bait fishing. And it's something that I really am trying to spend a lot of time getting dialed in, you know, down here is live bait fishing for Wahoo. And I'm going to share the whole journey with you as well. This way on days when I just can't troll, when I can't effectively put the plugs out, I don't have to switch gears and I could say, hey, let's do a couple of drifts. I know there's fish here, there's birds, there's bait, the water color's right, there's current. Everything is just lined up perfect. I just can't present those baits on the troll. Uh, so again, just trying to get dialed in on that live bait fishery. I've caught a lot of wahoo on live bait over the years, but it's not been intentional. What do I mean? Stinger rigs, goggle eyes, pilchards, runners, you know, off kites looking for big kings. And of course, here comes this wahoo and boom. Even on mono, looking for the tunas. So most of them have been on the kite baits or just drifting, you know, some flat lines. But now we're going to, you know, really go out there and just zero in on a wahoo spread. So I wanted to kind of talk you through some of the decisions that I've made, some of the rigs that I'm using, why, etc. So you can, you know, incorporate all of this into your approach as well. Not only here in the Keys, Southeast Coast, Gulf Coast, wherever you are, okay? I've realized, you know, first and foremost, obviously, you need bait. We can't ignore that. If you're going to live bait fish for wahoo, you need Ideally, Speedos, Goggle Eyes, or Blue Runners. Those are your three key baits. And here in the middle Florida Keys, we've got access to a tremendous amount of bait. The Speedos on the patch reefs, Goggle Eyes you can catch, and of course, Blue Runners are everywhere. And Blue Runners really are the most readily available. And that's what we're spending a lot of time doing. It's a great bait. It's so hardy. And when you're fishing it hard, you know, you don't want a bait that's flimsy that's going to just you know, pucker away and die quickly. You want that nice, strong, live bait. 
And that's why that blue runner is just ideal. And again, a lot of the wrecks are loaded with them out here, so they're easy to catch. Uh, sabiki rig, real important that it's the right sabiki rig. You're talking about targeting, you know, these fish that are one to three pounds, but you may get three, four, five of them on at one time, all going in different directions. So if you're fishing a flimsy, you know, sabiki rig or a really light rod, that's going to be a huge problem. So when we bait fish, it's an eight foot conventional rod, 50 pound braid on a, on a workhorse of a reel. Um, it's not about fun, it's about catching bait. And I found that these R&R &R tackle sabiki rigs, you know, there's a lot of sabiki rigs out there, but these, it's just a no-brainer. The guy's a, a pro, South Florida pro, and bottom line, they know how to catch bait. So th this is the rig to use, you know, it's that simple. Um, and it's heavy, you know, like I said, the trunk is 50, the branches are 30 pound, but you're still gonna blow through rigs, I'm telling you. I don't care how good these are, you're gonna blow through rigs. It happens because not only are you catching the blue runners, Spanish mackerels destroy the rigs, all sorts of stuff. So make sure that you bring a handful of sabikis. At the bottom, I put a heavy lead. I'm fishing down deep, 150 to 200 feet for these blue runners on deep wrecks. I'm fishing a 12 ounce sinker. You don't want a light lead because you want that rig to stay as vertical as possible, especially with multiple baits on there. If each bait is going in a different way, you're gonna have a giant tangle, a giant mess, and you're just burning time. So fish a heavy lead on the bottom, makes it just much easier to deal with the baits and much easier to deal with the rigs. So, okay, follow me here. We've loaded up on bait. We've got a well full of blue runners, and you know, how many do you really need? Gosh, I think if you have a dozen blue runners, you're in the game, baby. You're in the game for a few hours, you know, depending on the bite. And of course, if you can substitute, substitute those runners with Speedos or Gogs, everything we're talking about is going to be exactly the same. So my rig, you know, understand that there's a lot of outfits that you could use to target Wahoo. Spinning reels nowadays, you know, Shimano's Twin Power, the Stella, you know, even the Saragossa, they're just, their money for, you know, targeting the big Wahoos. Plenty of line capacity, ultra smooth drag. It's a great option. On my CV aboard my 39 CV, I'm setting up a spread of Tiagra 20s. Why? Well, who doesn't like fishing a Tiagra, right? That's first and foremost. I mean, we all cherish the opportunity to go out and fish Tiagras. I know I certainly do. That's one of the reasons I love Wahoo fishing is I've got a full spread of Tiagras. And now when I'm live bait fishing, I'm going to do the same thing. And so do my, you know, VIP experience guests and family and friends. You know, you want to put something in somebody's hand that's special because it's a special experience to live bait a big wahoo, you know, so great reel, but more importantly, plenty of line capacity. I've got a thousand yards of 50 pound diamond braid as backing, topped off with 50 pound diamond line. That's the combination right there. That gives me a ton of stealth and stretchability with that clear mono, but plenty of strength in the 50 pound class. But yet I also have a tremendous amount of capacity with all of that backing because even though you're targeting wahoo look you've got a multiple rod spread out there you may double up on fish one goes toward cuba and one goes toward jupiter who the heck knows a um, lot of different scenarios you never know what you're going to hook you're fishing big baits this is not a joke i'm not talking about little pilchards i'm talking about fishing big blue runners that generally you would look at and go hey i'm not going to fish that thing well i'm going to fish that thing because big baits are going to catch big fish and that's what i'm doing i'm looking for trophies and you know if it's not going to be a wahoo that eats that big blue runner it's going to be a sailfish it's going to be a full-grown blackfin it's going to be a smoker king I'm okay with all of those, I promise you. Uh, nevertheless, match to a six-foot chaos stand-up rod. I mean, just a perfect combination for this type of fishing. Um, I'm going to rig up a set of four of these outfits. And the rig itself is really what I wanted to talk to you a lot about because there's a lot of options when it comes to stinger rigs, right? They're single-strand wire versus titanium. You know, we'll start there. In my particular case... I'm fishing titanium, okay? It's 40 pound, there's 44 pound, anything in that class, that's all that I need and that's all that I want. I'd like to go as stealthy as possible, but I want to, of course, have that tooth-proof protection. 
However, if I go too heavy, you know, 80 pound, 90 pound, etc., yeah, I'm getting a lot more insurance on that rig, but man, it's a lot more visible. The bait might be restricted in movement. So for me, it's about that balance, right? And for me, I'd rather fish it a little bit lighter, get a few more bites, hopefully, and ultimately land a few more fish. Uh, the rig itself, you know, we'll start right at the top. Look, we've got the 50 pound mono coming right off the reel. Very, very stealthy. And that's tied to a very small 50 pound diamond ball bearing swivel. Very, very small right there. Okay, just an improved clinch knot right to the swivel. From the swivel, there's about 12 to 16 inches of the 40 pound titanium. That titanium then connects to a 7.0 VMC. I'll show you the exact hook here. It's a 7.0 VMC live bait hook. Short shank, not offset, just a perfect live bait hook. And then coming off the eye of the hook is about a 10 inch uh, stinger. Okay, right there. Again, the same titanium. Some guys switch it up. Some guys will fish heavier titanium on the stinger. For me, I don't know, I think that 40, 44 pound titanium is just perfect. And then that connects to, right there, a fish fighter treble. That number is 8527. It's a 2-0 fish fighter treble. Okay, it's a heavy duty treble hook. And remember, look, these fish aren't small. I'm targeting big fish. Wahoo's 50 to 100 pounds. I want that big treble. I want a strong treble hook right there. Look at that, okay, because these fish you know, I want some bite. I don't want a little flimsy hook on a 70 pound fish. So I'm really prepared for the Wahoos, okay, for sure. So it's just a perfect combination of being stealthy, um, but strong. A lot of guys will fish this wire right here all the way three, four feet. Okay, again, a matter of preference. So for me, it's about balance. And like I said, this seems to be the perfect balance. Perhaps the biggest part of the equation is the connections. It's that titanium. How do you use that titanium? Because it's not the same as single strand wire. And by the way, the benefits of titanium. First of all, look, look at this. You can kink it, you can twist it, you can bend it, you can step on it, you can chew it, you can do whatever you want to do, and it's still going to be like new. So right out of the gate, it's a superior product as far as durability, handle ability, which that's not even a word, but you follow me, okay? It's overall better. Is it thinner than single strand on a pound per pound basis? I'm not certain of that, to be honest with you. It may or may not be, but uh, again, that's not the benefits. The benefits is the flexibility of it, and you can use the rig over and over versus single strand, which generally after a single fish, it kinks, it's destroyed. Hey, it's okay, I'll sacrifice a rig because I just caught a fish on it. But to have a, a more durable, longer term rig certainly is a benefit. Um, and again, it's gonna give that bait more freedom and more movement. And I think perhaps that's the most important aspect to me is making that bait as natural as it can possibly be. The downside of this is that it doesn't, your connections are not the same as with single strand. With single strand, a haywire twist, you can do it by hand, you can do it with a Dubro little machine, which are awesome, by the way, with working with single strand. Um, but when it comes to the titanium, we use a different connection altogether. We use a tiny little crimp and kind of a, a figure eight type of pattern. Um, and I know it's really tough to see, you know, obviously right on here. So I kind of zoomed in exactly what these connections look like, you know, so you can see it yourself. Here's the titanium coming right down off the main leader, right to the eye of the hook. And this is what I want you to note right here, is how I have fed that titanium through the loop and brought it back up to the crimp. That's the most important part of the equation that I want you to see, because no matter how tight you pull, it's not gonna come undone. It's not gonna come apart, okay? So that's the connection right there. Now, I also want to point out one more thing here. Note on my crimp, and obviously this is zoomed in, but note coming off the crimp, I have a very small little tag end of titanium, okay? And it's not because I didn't trim that crimp tight. It has nothing to do with that whatsoever. I left that little tag end intentionally. 
I do it on all of my connections. So there's a very little, tiny little tag end right there on the swivel. There's a very little tag end on either side of the hook and then one on the treble. Why? Because there's a lot of connections here. Look, there's one right there, two, three, four, five. That's five failure points, five potential failure points in every single Wahoo rig in this distance, five different things that could fail. That's a lot. So by leaving that little tag end out, I'm able to test every rig. Literally, I can pull out some line and I don't know, secure that treble hook and using the rod, it'll just be easier to show it like this, I can pull. Okay, and put a tremendous amount of strain on that rig. Now understand that that titanium also has a little stretch, also has a little stretch to it. So I'm, I'm pulling past the, the stretch point. Okay, I'm really putting a lot of heat on it. Look, I'm never gonna put that much heat on it on my rod, right? Because you can rip that hook out of a Wahoo or a Big King. So I know that the rig is strong. Then what I'll do is I'll go back and I'll inspect every little connection. And I'll make sure that that little tag end is still there. Because if the knot slipped, it would pull that little tag end. So again, it's there, it's there, it's there, perfect. So the rig is perfect, it's solid. So again, that's why I leave those tag ends. You can then come back and trim them a little bit if you wanted to as well. Look, I'm targeting Wahoos, but it's a perfect rig for kingfish as well, for smoker kings. Now understand my spread, the final aspect here. Depending on the current, depending on the conditions, I wanna fish 150 to 225. That's my kill box right there. So usually I'll set up, we'll say 230, get into that 225 and drift all the way across into 150. Every day is different based on wind, current, etc. So obviously you need to adjust accordingly. Ideally, I'd like to fish four baits. I'm gonna fish one off the bow with a 39 CV, a flat line, no weight whatsoever. I'm gonna fish another flat line off the stern. So I've got two blue runners going ape shit, way you know, out there and I put them out there, okay? Don't put them you know, 100 feet away from the boat. I get them away from the boat because Wahoo can be spooky. They see a 40 foot boat sitting right there and while that bait looks attractive, it may spook them. So in turn, I wanna keep my baits way out there. Uh, then I'm gonna fish two deep baits, uh, different levels in the water column, 150 feet down, 100 feet down. I don't wanna go any deeper than that because guess what's on the bottom that's gonna come up and eat my blue runner? Sharks, okay, and that's gonna happen. There's no doubt about it. So I don't wanna go too close to the bottom. But once I feed that bait out, I don't wanna put my rig out 10 feet and then put a sinker on it and drop it 50 feet down because it's gonna be potentially right under the boat, especially if there's not a lot of current. My bait might be six feet away from the lead, but the lead is straight up and down and I don't want that to happen. So what I'll do is I'll feed my bait out and get it perhaps 100 feet away from the boat. Okay, get that bait 100 feet away from the boat and then using a sinker, depending again on current depth, it might be a 12 or even a 16 ounce sinker. Because remember, we're not talking about fishing a fragile bait. I'm talking about a two or three pound blue runner. This thing's got some, some strength, right? And if you fish too small of a lead, you're defeating the purpose of presenting that bait down deep in the water column. The idea is to keep them down there. So I'll then just using a rubber band, I'll just attach that lead in a breakaway fashion right to the 50 pound mono, drop it down 100 feet, boom, lock it up, it's in the rod holder. Drop another one down 50 feet, and I now have this killer four rod spread, live blue runners, I'm in the zone, there's bait, there's current, there's weed, there's birds, there's life, and soon there's gonna be a couple of Wahoo in my box.